What are the best methods to model light gauge framing? Ooh, that's a pretty good question. All right, let's do this. <laughs> so light gauge framing, um, I guess it can be very similar to um, to wood stud, uh, wood framing, um, which is something that after my last um, session, where's screen camera? After my last um, little tutorial, um, if you didn't see it, check it out. I think I posted it on Monday um, where I was showing how to put X's in um, stud walls. Um, there was, I got a few questions about the framing of this project. And so uh, I did have it open just in case. Um, I was also chatting with someone, with Tom, who's a, a member on our site. Um, where am I going? 3D views. And so, uh, you know, this isn't cold form, but, you know, not, not too different from cold form. Uh, imagine these are actually just this ch uh, C channels. And, uh, and so you can see what I have here is actually, um, let me turn off walls. And you can really see it. And roofs. Okay. So you can see I have cold form or stud, stud framing here. And so, I mean, the way, the way that this is done is mostly beam systems. Um, there are some little techniques that you could, that you could uh, do, like um, I should probably save as this so I don't overwrite my actual project. Let me just, sorry about that. Okay. <clears throat> Um, so, so beam systems um, are probably the easiest way, but they are a little bit of a pain in the butt to update um, in time. I mean, you could host them and in, in you know, make them parametric. But then the things like headers and 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 um, you know little uh, little sills and stuff like that, you know, those kind of things are, are kind of manually drawn in. But I can just quickly show you uh, show you kind of how how you can approach that on this file here. So if I was to you know, I, I would I would hope you guys know. If not, check it out. You know, just Google it. It's pretty easy. But Beam systems themselves are pretty straightforward, right? So if I go into this file here, just as a default, um, and because you said cold form, I'll just load in. Make sure there's some cold form framing loaded in here. So structural framing, light gauge steel, and we'll do some uh, furring hat channels. No, we'll do some light gauge joists. And we will do some four inch joists, sure. Four, fives, whatever, six, sure. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so framing itself, if you go under stru the structural tab and you go to beam systems, it's really cool. You, you basically just set up a floor profile or, or, or you can host on multiple things, which is what I'm gonna show you. Um, and then you just set the spacing. So. You know, if I wanted to, I just did beam system, and you can see I'm drawing uh, my floor here, and then I just set a direction. So um, if I click beam direction, I can change the direction of the beams, either either direction, right? And then here I can set my spacing. So right now it's set to six feet. If I want it to be 24 inches, I can. And then you can also set your beam type. So light gauge for uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. So if I want it to be a 400S, click apply and click finish. And just like that, you can see I have a system, okay? Now what's cool about these systems is they are semi-parametric. So if, if I, or I shouldn't say they are parametric. So if I edit the edit just like a floor, it's good. You can also obviously lock these to floors so they are parametric. Um, but also if you wanted to put a, a opening in this floor, for example, I can just do this, right? And there it is, okay? But then when it comes to the individual beams, so for example, there's an opening there, I'd probably need some sort of a header. Um, you have a couple options. If they're in the same direction as the, as the actual um, framing, a lot of times because it's already hosted, I'll take one of these frames and I'll just copy them. And then, and then you, know, you can do whatever you want with it. You can change the edges, you can change the sizes, so on. But if it's not in the direction, then you can just draw beams, structural beams, same size, right? And you can just draw them across here like this and then draw them across here like this, All right? And you can move them around, do whatever you want. Okay, so that's a quick way to sort of do that. But now let's just say we want it to be on a, a roof, for example, which a lot of light gauge framing uh, usually would be a roof. So what you're gonna need is you're actually most likely going to need your roof there first. So what I'm gonna do is draw a quick roof. I know I'm doing all this in one file, so it's kind of goofy, but um, I think you guys get the point. Plus I'm trying to get through it all so I get a bunch of your questions. And I apologize if I don't get to everyone's questions tonight, but um, like I said from earlier today, 
I couldn't believe how many, how fast and furious the questions came in. It was pretty awesome. Okay, so what I did here is I just made a quick gabled roof, right? So what I need to do is create a new beam system. So if I go into structure beam system, or I just click the beam system and type CS, which is create similar. Um, what I can do there is I can click set for my work plane, which you can also do under architecture or under modify. If you click set, you can actually pick a work plane. So right by default, we are drawing on level one, but we want to set it on a work plane, which is going to be our roof. So if I click pick plane and I select the top or the bottom of my roof, depending on what it is, I'm going to click the bottom. Now I'm drawing on that roof slope. So all I have to do is click pick lines. I just tab to pick my lines. I'm going to keep this at two feet, finish, finish, finish. And now if I hide this, you'll notice I have roof framing in that direction. And because it's hosted, notice this, if I change the roof pitch, it changes with the pitch, but I didn't lock the actual sketch. So it doesn't change the height or the length. So that's what I mean by it's semi parametric. You, 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 unless you, unless you plan for, I just hit F1 again, man, I, I haven't hit F1 like that in a long time. Um, you know, there, there's some, it's great, um, but you have to be, you have to be ready to, to play with how these things react to, to the building changing, right? Um, and then finally walls. Um, so what I did for those stud walls is, if I hit a stud wall here, do the same thing. You do a boom, beam system, you click set, you pick a plane. I'm just gonna pick the face of this wall for now. Click finish, oops, I need to actually draw a beam. Let's draw some beam systems. I'm just tabbing around and selecting. I'm gonna do my beam direction like this. And I'm gonna click finish. And now you can see I actually have my studs inside the wall there. So there's the studs there. If I hide them, you can see there's the studs there, which is pretty cool. And then I'll show you just quickly how, how, I, how I would make, um, I just hit that, didn't I, yeah. If I was to now put a window in this wall, um, there we go, let's put a window in the wall. Let's probably make it a little bigger so that we can do something with it. Let's make it a five foot window. Okay. So now that I have a window in here, um, what I can do is I can modify this beam system a little bit, right? So for example, if I go over here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my walls under visibility graphics, I'm gonna make them a little transparent. I'm gonna go with like 50% transparency so I can see my beam system. Ta -da. <clears throat> I'm gonna look straight at it. Of course I didn't draw it straight, so that doesn't work. Let's let's <laughs> I probably should have drawn it straight drew it straight. Sorry about that. Let's take all of this and let's rotate it so it's straight. Because that's just gonna I don't know if you guys know this, but drawing anything on an angle in Revit sucks. Okay. So now I'm looking at it straight and so now you can start modifying this thing however you need So like for example if I I'm just copying these beam systems because remember they're hosted already They're in the right plane and I'm starting to make my king posts um, you could um, You could draw you could copy and rotate these as well if you want so for example if I if I copy this guy and I rotate it uh, 90 degrees um, you could see it rotated, but unfortunately it also rotated in the x-axis, which isn't necessarily the worst thing uh, based on this framing. But And then you can start filling in the gaps. But again, the, 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 the problem here is that um, it's a pain in the butt to update. And so if it comes to updating uh, is, is extremely important. I can also unpin these. Unpin, unpin. I can split them. And then I can S, uh, S, SL on the keyboard is split, by the way. And then I can just do that and quickly, quickly frame out this opening. But as you can see, now that I have this opening frames, unless I spend the time to lock this stuff to the opening, um, when I do this, guess what? The framing stays. So be wary, um, unless you use a plugin like a Strucksoft MWF framing or a few other framing plugins that are, that are out there, um, or you take a little bit of a different approach, then um, you are.